Well, good evening. My name is Robert Shippo, and I will be leading this Ash Wednesday service tonight. We welcome you who are watching at home. This is a very special time of the year because Ash Wednesday introduces us to the whole season of Lent, and we'll talk about that tonight. Will you pray with me as we begin? O oh God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature. For we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sins, that we may obtain the promises you have laid up for those who are repentant through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please listen to the words of the psalmist from the 51st Psalm. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth, in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. We sing the opening hymn. Chief of Sinners, Though I Be, 611 in your hymnal.
The first reading for tonight comes from the Old Testament book of Joel. We will be thinking about these words as we come into the sermon time. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him? A grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Consecrate the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became je jealous of his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied. And I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the Old Testament lesson. The epistle lesson appointed for tonight is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> we implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listen to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for for the right hand and for the left. Through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet well known, as dying 
And behold, we live as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. This is our epistle lesson. And finally, the reading of the gospel for Ash Wednesday. From Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. He will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moths nor moths nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So ends the gospel for this night. So tonight as we come together, I would like to share with you some of the thoughts that have come to me from this book of Joel in the Old Testament. I'd like you to think back, first of all, into your own lives. Growing up, well, we talked about giving up something for Lent. We would try not to make it something too awful, too hard. Chocolate would be on the bottom of the list, maybe vegetables on the top, something that would work for us. This, this resolution for Lent usually came after we failed at a New Year's resolution. 
But the Old Testament lesson from Joel that I just read speaks to renewal and the attitude that we approach God with not only in this season of Lent, which begins with Ash Wednesday and lasts for seven weeks, but our continued relationship with God. The teachers of the New Testament continue to remind us that confession is a personal act. It is between you and God. The references are many in the Old Testament where ashes are used to signify that I am truly sorry for my sins. Why ashes? The ashes we use for Ash Wednesday are made from burning palm branches, reminiscent of of Palm Sunday, when glory proceeded crucifixion on the cross. But you know, there's something about ash. When you get it on your fingers, you can't just go over to the faucet and wash it off with water. It won't come off. It sticks to you. It holds on to you. Kind of like our sins. But there's something we need to remember. And to put it more bluntly, the New Testament encouragement is to repent personally to God because this is something between you and him. No one else needs to know. Now what is important is that you know that you are sorry for your sins. You see, your neighbor needs to confront in his own or her own sins. So each Lent becomes a time to to return and to honestly think of yourself and your broken relationship through sin that causes you and God to be separated. The prophet Joel gives some words of encouragement when he says, God says, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. And then there's an action word. And rend, what? Old Testament talks about rending your clothing when you're mad. No, Joel says, and rend your heart and not your garments. Lent is a personal time to be clear with God about this relationship that you have with him and get rid of the baggage of sin that you might be holding on to. It's not a time to play games of wishful thinking or self-improvement or to think, I, I need to say what God wants to hear and then everything will be okay. Now, it's a time of reflection of who you are and what sin does to your life. So it's time to come clean, not necessarily clean the closet, but to come clean with God about who you are and to confess your sin. It's a time to wash and refresh Do you think this is too much to ask of a God who created you? Do you think he doesn't care about you and your problems? Take another look at the cross. 
that was made for you and for me. Joel holds out a promise. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger. I haven't heard that much in the last 12 months. And abounding in steadfast love, and I haven't heard much about that either. And he relents over disaster. That is something I can get my mind and my heart around. And Joel says, he might even leave a blessing. And ultimately, God did leave a blessing. God gave us his son to be our savior. He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who gave his life for us and rose again. So Ash Wednesday reminds us of so much more than ritual, so much more of doing something. It reminds us of something done for us. It reminds us that as I come clean with my Heavenly Father, I do so in the confidence that Jesus paid the price for my sins. And that he calls me to live free and joyful and blessed with a new life in Christ. Certainly our burdens are heavy. New responsibilities and, and concerns about the future present themselves every day in our lives. And as we stop to reflect on our lives to seek forgiveness for the past and for discernment to make decisions in the days and weeks ahead. Our Lord and Savior promises to come to us with words of comfort and peace. The last words in his disciple, to his disciples before Jesus ascended into heaven were, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we come together this night, we join together in the ancient words of the canticle. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things to me, and as holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, Father and to the, the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now 
and and will will be be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. You are reminded to remember your church. We are stretched far apart by this pandemic, and yet we are close. We are still one body, one confession, and that is where we receive our strength as a Christian community. So remember your church in ways of service and in ways of giving. Amen. Our prayers for tonight continue with the Litany for Ash Wednesday. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to prosper the preaching of your word, to bless our prayer and meditation, to strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, and to give heart to our sorrow and strength to our repentance. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To draw all to yourself, to bless those who are instructed in the faith, to watch over and counsel the poor, the sick, the distressed, the lonely, the forsaken, the abandoned, and all who stand in need of our prayers, to give abundant blessing to all works of mercy, and to all mercy, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To turn our hearts to you, to turn the hearts of our enemies persecutors and slanderers, and graciously graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Join me in the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver deliver us from from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom kingdom and the power and the the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, 
Hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full power, pardon, and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. O oh God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wicked ways and, and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature. For we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sin, that we may obtain the promises that you have laid up for those who are repentant. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. O oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this holy night, on this beginning of Lent, on this Ash Wednesday, when we are reminded of those words, from dust we came, to dust we shall return. We live in a world in Christ's peace. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. <coughs> As we close tonight, hear these beautiful words and join in singing the Lamb in our service hymnal number 500 and 50. Amen. Go in, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you.